Welcome to the Tundilanio podcast and our program, The Nigerian Theatre Witnesses to History, where we seek to bring to you those who have made impact in various fields of the Nigerian theatre in the last couple of decades, perhaps 50, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. We seek to document their experiences in their own words, and that's why they are witnesses for you and for the use of those who may want to do research in any area of theatre knowledge now and in the future. Today, we bring you a new personality. He was a man not trained in the theatre at all. He was an accidental theatre artist. He came into broadcasting and he ended up in the course of his career and after it becoming a trailblazer in theatre and broadcasting. Today we start our interview with Chief Dr. Yemi Farumbi former Nigerian ambassador to the Philippines. He had been general manager of the Nigerian Television Authority in Ibado. He was also the founding general manager of the television service of Oyo State that later merged to become the Broadcasting Corporation of Oyo State BCOS Radio and Television Services. He will be talking to us about how he veered from his training and his original occupation, his original job, into becoming a full-fledged broadcaster, a theatre artist, a director, a filmmaker. Welcome, Dr. Yemi Farumbi. Thank you so much. Great privilege. The privilege is ours because you experienced the growth, especially of the area of theater and dramatic arts, known as broadcasting and compassing radio, TV, film, for such a long time. And that's the kind of depth that we want to capture so that when people are looking for materials, documents, this can be a source for them to be able to talk about the rich history of Nigerian theater. How did you find yourself in that field? In the Tele radio, television, field. Sometimes I think by coincidence. Mm. Accident because I didn't go deliberately into television to seek for a profession. I found myself in television because I was pursuing other things. Just like the university, some business they do research, had a number of admissions abroad, supported the scholarships or fellowship or teaching assistants, but I didn't have a passport. Hmm. And because at that time, in Nigeria, there was only one passport of ours in Qatar. Yes, there it was. And that was where I also first took my passport. Yeah, and that very <laughs> thick course. Yes. And you really have to put prayer there. Because the other thing was uh, stack files, stack dirty files, ditching yes. the floors and finding war racks and so on. And if you didn't go there, nobody looked at your back. No, so, nobody. So I needed to work in Ibadan, 
vehicles so that I could accelerate obtaining a passport mm -hmm. that I can go abroad. I tell you what I wanted was to do interestingly, postgraduate for either in town planning or in Urbana regional planning mm -hmm. or in geomorphology. My preference was really geomorphology. Study of rocks, mountains, and all of that. So, and I saw an advert of WNTPW looking for people, and I applied. They said we should go and do aptitude testing. Why? They are tests and development research. Dead roof. Dead I went. Obviously, I made the important point. I was invited to an interview. Um, Apple was then called Statutory Corporation Service Commission. Then went. Eventually, I got the job. I had no intention of staying in office. Mm. I just thought I would get the job, access the girls, get my. It was to be a stepping stone yeah, to other things. To fly away. But obviously, something had happened before I got the job. There so had been a debate, the quality of my results of the university, the quality of my performance. And the fact I also told them at the interview, I wanted to go and do this graduate. So they thought I would stay. stay. And that it would be an abundant waste of time and energy and resources for them to give me the job. So some members of the panel apparently thought they should take the second course mm. because of this reason. But the then chief executive, I got to know much with that, insisted that when you advertise, you didn't advertise for the second course. You are looking for the best. So they gave me the job. So on the day I started, I was asked to go and see before I started to do all of this. Mm. And I said, what was that again? He said he left instruction that I must see him anytime I can. So I went to see him and reviewed my performance and myself. He said, uh, there are people who feel we should all be meeting because you lost it. But I want to talk to you, not because I want you to stay, but your performance and results were too good. So I want to see that performance. I mean, that excellence in your performance of the job. Mm. Let it manifest. Yeah. I don't care whether you stay a week or a year. Let it show. Let it show. That, that was why I wanted to see. Mm. Ordinary to work hard. <laughs> Ordinary to work hard. Yes. I like that. <laughs> yeah, really, to work hard. <laughs> so, so I took out the job and because I didn't want him to regret backing somebody in never did. Mm. So I got very, very hard. Um, and I was excited by the environment of broadcasting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, was I was seeing Queen Eola's of I was seeing Anikia by the way, I was seeing Yomi Ono, Jipo Bibilari, Jipo Babalola, Nessie Nipahe, Sam Adibi, Ayogunla, voices that I had, that I sometimes didn't know they were human beings. And you know, there's something about this broadcasting, it's very, very important. Formal. Yes, very, very informal. Yes. And uh, WNTV took a formality to a, a standard that was attractive for the young people. Yes. So, seeing those people, seeing them in canteen, you know, there's, yes, you know, the person is senior to you, but there's no rigidity in interaction. So, I got attracted. I would promise that. I will make sure that the day is good. And then he now did something 
started passing on jobs directly to me. Mm. I had no relationship with my chef. Wow. So you look at marketing problems and say, tell you I need to go to Lagos or no, I'm not well, I'll say that. Okay. I could say go to Abaco. Why is it that um, the upper time is rising? Uh, you could say join them in the news to, to decide on topics mm. for end up and things like that. And when we are going to start regular television week, annual anniversary yeah. and things like that. So, you hear me? You'll be the second. So I got closer to the very creative people. Um, then I realized that really, what was my business in wanting to do rocks? Mm. That's, I love this mind changing time. Than the other one. Mm. I love the fact that you can change the society, you can change the tone, the direction, the thought processes, the mindset of the society by being broadcast, which I won't be able to do if I was. It was dealing with rocks, rocks and all of that. So I got excited, I got interested. By the time I think uh, Radio Netherlands was doing a short story competition, I did. And I think I did second. Mm. So I said, you can write stories. No, I thought all you knew was rocks. <laughs> so it, that's why I said, it's accidental, it's but it's also perhaps coincidental. Uh, because if Oile had not spoken that way, I would not have taken you more just, than active interest. You just do your bit and get out of it. Bit by bit and get out. Then, I started seeing and meeting a lot of these artists, not the racket in the first instance. Movie, for example, yeah, it was an institution, yes, that you struggle to watch. Yeah. I say, Hey, the man, now I can see him. I mean, with his uh, white rapper, oh, and things like that. But as a lad, I demand, yes, uh, this was in the early 70s, or the early 70s. But, um, you know, towards the end of the 60s. Um, WNTB started taking what I would call indigenization of production content, content more seriously. Because in the early when I look at the records, which I had the privilege of seeing, we used to have 10 percent local and 86 point. Those were the days of Laramie, yeah, for the all of that. As even as at sixty-eight, they've not reached thirty percent. But now, as a matter of deliberate policy, no, we have to uh, begin to increase the local content. I guess that's what we were fighting for on the Yes. <laughs> so, we call content view. A bet was created for that. In Nigeria. If I remember very well now, we had a Monday, I think that was Sunday, I didn't that was a Tuesday. Oh, yeah. There was a Wednesday, that was the first time. Uh -huh. There was a Thursday, um, Bodhiwasi. Bodhiwasi. That was a Friday, I think that was called Ashishupa. No, that wasn't for on Saturday. And of course, on Sunday was the English theater. The theater. WNTV Playhouse. Playhouse. And Adibia was uh, Adibia handling it. He used to direct us. So it was um, a good effort. Improve the content. When I had the good luck of becoming a GM, I, I said to myself, the local content must be more. And I think by the time I was leaving, 
I had a blue card content of 85%. 85%? As against the foreign. Wow. Uh, you reversed the I thing reversed. and turned. Because in any case, the man who founded, who brought television, if I will know, in his opening, he said he wanted to use television as a teacher and an educator. Mm. So uh, he wasn't thinking, in my view, primarily about formal education. Yeah. He was thinking of the totality of public education, education. public health, public enlightenment, mm. and all of that mm. Mm. worked together. And that if you are going to really achieve that aim, you cannot be importing foreign mm. films and so on. Of course, it was cheaper to get foreign films. Yes. Um, you know, when you do a local production, that station bought the total cost. Yes. And that was a little bit high for it. We are not syndicating. Yes. We are not bicycling. Yes. So, and that well, problem still remains today. Today, yeah, because um, they have not moved. And that's in, in spite of BUN, BORN, and whatever they yes, have. Yes, there's something fundamentally wrong with the management of creativity. Um, by the time I got out of television, I realized that one thing that we need, we needed, and we still need very seriously, are content producers. Yes. There is no station anywhere outside Africa where the station attempts to own, to own its content. content. Outside the news and yeah. probably current, current affairs. affairs. Any other content you bought you bought a part of it. You go buy. You go and look for what we call canned programs there. Yeah. You buy. So we need very seriously content producers, drama, musical, documentaries, features, and so on. But for it to survive, the station will be willing to patronize. Patronize. And the Thank you for going there because I was just going to raise that. Yeah. Because a lot of the stations are not willing to pay for any content. It is a pity they want content free. Yes. And it's not where they work. In fact, they are asking content producers to come and pay for, for them to even air. bringing the content. It is wrong. If we are going to get television of the quality that we ought to have, being the pioneer in Africa, we must be ready as station to pay. And the beauty of it is that all the stations can use the same content. Yes. It's just a question of sharing. Yes. So the cost per station will be low. low. And the content producer will be excited by the sheer coverage, the audiences available a to his Again, own. sir, maybe we should also look at the way advertisers have worked in this con in this context. Um, they themselves, I believe, could influence the way content is produced, is marketed, and so that they can do more in terms of where their advertisement can be seen and things like that, rather than just on one station, and it's because they are sponsoring just this program. Mm. Speaker, what do you think? You know, in this country, the percentage of our GDP that we spend on advertising is less than 1%. Yes. Because we don't understand, really, the significance, the effect, and the importance of advertising to promoting the product. Yes. Unfortunately, in those early days, most of those products came from outside Nigeria. Yes. 
And when they didn't come from outside Nigeria, they were just being assembled here. Yeah. Yeah. Even the beer, the Coca-Cola, yeah. even up to today, they are just being assembled. assembled. All we have to eat is water. Mm. So, so most times, when those products are coming, they come with their own advice. Yes. That are not focused even local on our local own support. In fact, the last few years, it became serious that most of our advice had to be produced in South Africa. South Africa, yeah. yeah. And then the advertising agencies and the advertisers didn't see the beauty that, for example, if you sponsored wins against my soul in NTP, mm. that you could sponsor it in 10, 11 stations. And that would give your product uh, a wide ba wider band. Wider, band. exactly. Stay, stick and it to a station. station. And that would have produced, uh, mm. uh, also assisted in improving, in increasing creativity and productivity. Yes. But no, they would just post hmm. I When I left broadcasting and decided I was going to go into production, which sounded strange to everybody because they thought I should go into management consultancy. But I still don't be happy because I see so much creativity rolling on the streets. Hmm. Strolling in Nigeria, right. not being harnessed, not being harvested, not being packaged for the viewers at home, or and to give money into those creative virtue people. Yeah. So I said I would do it, and that I was going to syndicate my program. Uh, so I was, I never produced a program for a one stage. I did all my production. Interested in you, right? And it had a reason. As at that time, India was producing about 360 films a year. Every year. And 90% of them were wow. in, in, in Indian language, language films. We a subtitle. Nigeria through Nollywood is also producing a lot of content, but not enough yet in the local languages of Nigeria. Can we learn from the Indian experience? And if we can, what can we learn from it? What do we choose from it? How do we go forward to make the Nigerian product have greater appeal all over the world? Next week, Dr. Farumbi will be talking to us about his thoughts on those and other issues. Oh